Those people who hide their sin, who lead a double life, will not ever be able to get ahead. But whoever will confess their wrong ways and repent and turn away, resist and stop it, will have the mercy of God. Will have the mercy of God. Happy are those that fear the Lord, but those who harden their heart will fall into times times of trouble. Proverbs 14, verse 9. Fools laugh at sin, but those who walk in righteousness will have favor from God. Verse 11. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the house of the upright will be blessed. Verse 12, there is a way that seems right to people, but in the end it leads to death. Verse 14, the backslider in his heart will be filled with their own ways, but a good person will be satisfied in himself. Verse 16, a wise man fears the Lord, and turns away from evil, but the fool rages and is overconfident. Verse 18, the simple inherit foolishness, but the prudent will be crowned by the spirit of knowledge. Verse 25, a true witness will deliver your soul, but a deceitful witness will tell you lies. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. It will lead you out of the snares of death. Today is part eight. of the contrary spirit. It is the contrary spirit army of robbers to rob you, wasters to waste you, swallowers to swallow you up, and spirits that come to put you in chains because of curses. Because of curses. Jeremiah 7, 1 through 13. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Go stand in the gate of the biggest church, in town and say this to the church people. Hear the word of the Lord, all you church people that come to church to worship the Lord, all the people in the church. But there are many people in the church who are bound by contrary spirits. They go to church but once they're out, they go to Satan. They go to the demons. They lead a double life. They're a secret agent Christian. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, change your ways. He tells the people in the church, change your ways and your doings, and I will let you stay in my church. Do you know that there are some people that God don't want in the church? Everybody thinks, oh, God, what God really wants is for me to go to church. No, not necessarily. 
Not necessarily. If you don't want to change your life and you come in with demons, God don't want demons in the church. Why is God doing deliverance in these services? Have you ever got have you ever had any deliverance here? Anybody? What? Yes. What? Yes. Well, why did God do that? Because he don't want no demons in his church. In the church building, he don't want no demons. And he don't want no demons in the church. The Bible says, don't you know you're the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you? If you defile this temple, it brings the destroyer. Huh? The destroyer. A demon. And God don't want demons in the church building, and he don't want demons in the church building. That's why he cast them out. But some people, many people, they go to church and... They don't want no deliverance. Their heart's not in it to get free. Their heart is not in it to change. They just go to church for whatever reason. But it's not about God. They say they go to church because they love God. Look at these people. Change your ways and your doings and I will cause you to be able to stay in the church. And the people say, what do you mean? I go to church. Look at verse 4. Don't trust in your lies, these words you say. The church, the church, I go to church. Don't trust in that. Change your life. Be honest. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Verse 6, don't oppress people. Don't call people foreigners. Would you want to be called a foreigner? Are you a foreigner? How about you? You think you're a foreigner? Every person in this room is a foreigner. Because you're not from the Philippines. And he's not from Germany. And I'm not from the United States. Our family landed on the boat in Turkey, Noah's Ark, and became Turkish citizens for a while. But before that, our family came from the Garden of Eden. You are Edenites. You are Edenites, and that makes you a foreigner. Oh, am I touching that pride? Oh, that Filipino pride. <laughs> that German Stolzmeister. Das ist der Stolzmeister, ja. But look, if you don't want to be a foreigner, then get saved. Because once you get saved, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus, and we all became, become one in Christ. Got it? Got it? Everybody is red now. We're all in the blood of Jesus. Huh? Call nobody foreigner. Help the homeless children, the widows who lost their husbands. Do not shed innocent blood, no abortion. And don't get involved with demons because it will hurt you. It will hurt you. Right, hurt. Just write the things up there that apply, or else our list is going to go too big, okay? 
hurt is one of the correcting spiritual attackers of the contrary spirit. If you will correct your life, I will cause you to stay in the church and you can live in your house where you live, where your family lived forever. But if you trust in your lying words that bring no profit to God, if you are a stealer, murderer, if you are in adultery with humans or with God, because you can commit adultery in your marriage with Jesus Christ. You get involved with love of the world, you don't love Jesus. You can commit adultery. You get involved with demonic behavior and you are committing adultery against your marriage with God. If you swear falsely, I swear to God. Oh, I swear to God, but you're lying. If you burn incense at demonic altars to demon false gods, onto false gods, the, the Hebrew word for false gods is shadim. And shadim means spirits, means demons. Anytime the Old Testament says you went with false gods, you worship false gods, the real word originally was shadim. And shadim says you go with the demonic. In the New Testament, it was changed over to diamonia, the word diamonia, and then they shortened it to the word demon. So anytime it says you went after false gods, it says you go after demons. Do you see? After demons. Will you come and stand in church? Look at verse 10. Will you come into church, which is called by the name of God, and say, we're already delivered? We're already, I don't need no deliverance. We're already delivered. I'm already free. But you look in their lives and they're doing all this. Lying, cheating, stealing, oppressing, anger, hatred, rage, bitterness, unforgiveness. All the fruits say, all the fruits say you're not in God. You're not in God, but you're in church. Do you see? That's what he's saying. In this house, which is called by my name, it's become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, don't say no, I've seen it. That's what God says, because God sees everything. I would say this in my opinion, that the last place that God looks at your behavior is in church. That's the last place. Because anybody can put on a nice cowboy shirt and comb your hair and go to church and act nice for an hour and a half. So God doesn't look at your church behavior unless your behavior is way out of line. He looks at what's going on in your personal life. It's your personal life that judges whether you're going to be blessed or cursed. Mostly. Mostly. When you think no one's looking, someone is. Two of them are. The devil and God. They're always watching. You can pull the shades down in your bedroom. You can lock the door so mom or someone else can't come in the bedroom and you can do your sneaky little thing. You can sneak around the corner and go have a smoke and a drink of Tandawai and you think nobody sees. 
but they do see. I tell you this, anybody here that ever came in here and they're part of the church and they go, I would like to quit smoking, but the thing is, once they make that statement before the Lord, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've walked out and walked around the corner and there they are. And they get busted. And when they see me, they're like this. Now look, it ain't my business. God didn't send me over to go, oh, you're such a bad boy. No. He went to show them their own behavior that they know in their heart it's wrong. They know in their heart it's wrong, but they can't get it until you almost get busted. Huh? I mean, if for you boys here that are looking at pornography, and I know some of you are, Bring it here on Sunday and do it right here. Just come up right here and do your masturbation thing and your porn porn thing and drink your ton to why. Right here. Because at home when you do it, you go, well, there's nothing wrong with it. If there's nothing wrong with it, then come and do it. You husbands and wives, if you're committing any adultery, bring your... Bring your wife and your girlfriend. Let them sit together. Bring your husband and your boyfriend, one on either side, because nothing wrong with it. But you wouldn't do it, because you know there is something wrong. How do you know there's something wrong with those things? Conviction of the Holy Spirit. But if you have no conviction of the Holy Spirit, you are completely bound by a demon. You have gone past where God can convict you, and either you're going to get delivered or you're going to hell. Simple as that. Simple as that. And don't say in your heart, you and your demon, oh, I hope not. Hope will not get you out of hell. Hope will not keep you out of hell. Repenting and coming back to Jesus will. And everyone has to make their choice. But I can tell you, you get away with nothing. If you are walking and living in a contrary spirit and God is no longer convicting you, you're in a bad situation. You're in a bad situation. Look at verse 16. No, verse 15. I will cast you out of my sight. First he casts you out of his church. Look. First he casts you out of the church. A lot of people get up on Sunday. This is going to be very hard. You probably won't believe this. But a lot of people get up on Sunday and go... Should I go to church or should I go to the mall? All my friends are going to the mall today. All my backsliding friends are going to the mall today. Hmm. Should I stay home and watch TV or should I go to church? Hmm. Kind of tired. Looked at Facebook too late. Should I go to church? Hmm. And God says, no, don't go. No, don't go. You think God don't say that? He just said it right there, didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he? He said, there's some people I don't want in the church until they repent. Many people came to John the Baptist and they said, hey, I want to get wet. Put me under the water. He said, no, I will never baptize you. You snakes, you people that are full of snakes, you people full of vipers, go back home and repent and change your life and come back with fruits that prove your repentance. Then we will baptize you. 
Is that some hard religious thing? No. God does not want people around him who willingly want to have demons in their life. He wants people around him that willingly want him in their life. Do you get it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, turn off that phone. Whoever has a phone here, that don't work. Okay? Come on, turn off the cell phones. That don't belong in the house of God. Look, house of robbers. Robbers. Job 5, 1 through 5. Look, we're living in serious times. If you don't think that this is serious times, everything in the world is satanic now. Everything. The churches are full of demons. They're controlled by demons. The pastors are mocking the Holy Spirit. They're mocking deliverance. Any time the Holy Spirit starts to move, all these people with religious spirits come up and start mocking and criticizing and judging until the young kids lose their fire. It's all satanic. Look what all these religious stupid fools, pastors, have been doing against this Ashbury thing they call revival. I can tell you this, I haven't even seen one. I haven't even seen one. But I saw a clip, one little clip, that all the pastors are, this is Satan, condemning and ridiculing and laughing at. Before this happened, all the pastors, pastors were going, all the Baptist pastors were saying, oh, well, we hope it's revival, but we have to watch it very carefully. Hundreds of kids praying to Jesus, worshiping the Lord. But maybe there's something wrong. Got to have order. Have to have order. They're bound. If the blind lead the blind, they will lead you into the ditch. And I don't know, last week I saw a little clip where all of a sudden someone started manifesting a demon right in the middle of service. Nobody was saying devils, demons, deliverance. Nobody was saying come out. No one was la bas la hat gua. Nothing. They're just worshiping the Lord and the anointing began to build and the anointing is by the Holy Spirit. Satan does not bring the anointing. And somebody started to manifest a demon and fell on the ground and everybody went, oh, they're having an epileptic seizure. And everybody in the revival, because the kids, the kids have all grown up in happy clappy. They've all been grown, they've all been taught a Christian can't have that, and demons can't do this and that, and you can't that and this. And so when it comes down to where somebody needs deliverance, all these kids are like this. What are we going to do? Their hearts were right, but they had no training. Their hearts were right, which is what brought the anointing. Maybe some of their doctrine is wrong, like I said. I, I haven't listened. Maybe some of the doctrine is wrong. Maybe there are some wrong people in there. But it's the beginning. Worship of the Lord is the beginning. It has to start, and then the anointing starts, and then we start to bring in teachers, and we begin to learn. But somebody in the back who did have some training, who had been around some deliverance people out on the street, because deliverance isn't welcome in the church, churches. 
you saw in the video somebody going, come out of them in Jesus' name. Come out of them in Jesus' name. And all the religious people, oh, my God. Stop it. Stop it. It's getting out of control. Out of our control. Whose control? The religious spirit's control. And at all cost, when the anointing comes to break the yoke, all the undelivered pastors and leaders and all the ones on YouTube began to slander and mock and ridicule. This must be stopped. Das ist verboten. This is the spirit of Satan. And he's everywhere in all of these old religious people. If you are in a church like this, my advice to you and you people out there on live stream, give them nothing. Starve them out of their office. Do not give tithes. Do not give offerings. Do not help them. Starve them. The Bible says if someone will not work, they should not eat. Starve them out of their office. It's time to break the chains of old man demonic religion. It's time for the sheep to come out of the sheep pen and go forward to serve God. And we must stop these pastors. They must be told, sit down and shut up or I'm going to leave because I warn you by the Holy Spirit, in this move that is coming that God is going to do, none of those pastors will be used. They will be told, sit in the back and shut up or go. And it's going to be the young ones, the youth who are on fire. Because these leaders are not on fire. They're under control. They want to control you and manipulate you and dominate you and make you blind and bound and tell you lies. It's time for them to be, to be gone. We have to make room for a new move of the Holy Spirit. Now, you need to have pastoral respect if they deserve it, if they are doing the real gospel. But if they're not, they don't deserve to be respected. They deserve to be rejected. Starve them. Galatians 1, 6 through 12 says, if I or an angel of God comes and preaches any other gospel other than what Jesus did, they will receive a curse. So if you're giving money into something that is of Satan, that is not of the Holy Spirit, you will share in that curse. Because that is a contrary spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking to people today. Lead, follow, or get out of the way. And you might think that's too hard. Maybe I'll get a million emails. Well, I can spam as many as have something to say that happy clappy is okay. It's not okay. We do not come to preach the words of men. We do not come in the doctrines of men because the doctrines of men make the power of God of no effect. Say, Jesus, Holy Father, if what James just said is true, that maybe people in the church need deliverance, if maybe I need deliverance, I ask you to show me. I ask you. To show me. You mean that?
Take a deep breath. This is God showing you this. This is God showing you this. This is not a man doing this. Call unto him and he will answer. And he will show you things maybe you don't know. But you have to get your heart right with God. You have to come away from a contrary spirit. He is still a savior. He is still a healer. He is still a deliverer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a God that does not change. What he used to do, he's still doing right now. Give you praise, Father. Job 5, 1 through 5. Call now. If there be any who will answer you. And which of the saints is going to help you? None. A statue not going to help you. A statue of some dead saint, some religious. Which of the saints is going to help you? None. For, for wrath kills the foolish man. Envy slaves the silly people. I have seen the foolish taking root. And their habitations was cursed. His children are far from safety. They are crushed. Right, crushed. Crusher. They are crushed. And there is no one to deliver them. Whose harvest the hungry eats up. The robber. The hungry spirit. The hungry spirit that comes to devour. The Bible says, Satan goes as a hungry, roaring lion, seeking to devour. Right, the devourer. Look, the hungry eats up your money, eats up your blessing. It's taken from the thorns. The thorns mean curses. Remember Adam and Eve? Thorns and thistles. Thorns are curses. The robber swallows up the substance. Right, robber and swallower. The robber and the swallower all come from a contrary spirit to come and swallow you up your money, your blessings from curses that you will not deal with. Look at Isaiah 54, 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I created the waster to destroy. Right, waster to destroy. Waster to destroy. But if you go with God, then no weapon that is formed against you can prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment will be condemned. This is the heritage of Servants, not believers, servants. You want the blessing? You must be a servant that serves the Lord. Servant. 
if you're not serving God, you are bound by a contrary spirit. Proverbs 18, verse 9. He that is lazy is the brother to the great waster. Right, lazy and great waster. Laziness is a contrary spirit to God. God will never bless a lazy person. God will never bless a lazy person. If you like to sleep, you have a demon spirit. You like to sleep in, you can't get up in the morning, keep hitting your alarm clock, five more minutes, five more minutes, you have a demon spirit. You do not have the Holy Spirit. You do not have the Holy Spirit. You got that snooze alarm? Yeah, well, some of you are laughing. Look in your wallet and laugh. Look at your bank account and tell me how funny that is. If you're laughing, there's a demon in there telling you, oh, it's so funny, I stole your money. So funny, look what I did to you. I robbed you and cheated you. Ha, 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 ha. That's the demon laughing. That's not you laughing. There's nothing funny about being a lazy, sleep-in, late person that can't get up and show up at work on time. There's nothing funny about that. And God will never reward that. The Bible says, produce fruit for God. If you're not producing fruit for God, you have a contrary spirit, and that spirit is laughing at you he thinks it's funny what he has done to you. If you don't produce fruit for God, you'll be chopped down and cast in the fire. That won't be funny. Will it? Will it? No. Isaiah 59, 1 through 7. Behold, the Lord's hand is not grown short, God can hear you, God can see you, but your sin puts a separation between you and God. Your hands need deliverance. Your lips speak lies. Your tongue talks about perversion. No one wants honesty. No one wants the truth. They trust in their pride. They speak lies. In their soul, are snake eggs. Snake eggs are hatching in their souls. Verse 7, their feet run around in evil. Their thoughts are thoughts of evil. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Right. Waster. Working with destruction they don't know peace they have no peace they walk on a crooked path everywhere they go they have no peace no rest we wait for the light of God we wait for the brightness but we only walk in darkness we grope for a solution like blind people like people who have no eyes we stumble in the day as if it were night. Like we are dead people. We roar like bears. Right, roar like bears. We roar like bears. We mourn like doves. We look for help from God, but it doesn't come. Verse 13. Because we are backsliders, because we are liars in God, we have departed and backslid from God and all we speak is negativity, considering, conceiving and uttering. Words out of our heart are false. Judgment is turned away. We look for truth, but there is no truth. 
yeah truth fails and every person who comes away from backsliding is attacked and mocked and the Lord saw it and the Lord was unhappy about it and he saw that people had stopped intercession prayer and everybody said well it's just the way it is well it's just it's just the way it is Leviticus 26 28 If you walk contrary unto God, God will walk contrary to you. And God will punish you seven times more than normal for a contrary spirit. What is a contrary spirit? It's someone that have demons that tell you you don't have to be in obedience to God and that you don't have to change and that you don't have to change look at verse 21 if you walk contrary to me and will not listen to me I'll punish you I'll put seven times sickness on you disobedience to God with a contrary spirit is pretty serious stuff with God Psalm 79, Psalm 79, 1 through 12. Oh God, the unbelievers have come to rob me the unbelievers are coming into the church and defiling it. The backsliders are coming into the church and they're defiling the church. Your servants are being killed. They are meat to the fowls of heaven. The flesh of the saints are being destroyed by the beasts, spiritual beasts. The fowls of heaven. Jesus talked about that in Matthew 13 when a go sower goes to sow, the fowls come and steal it. Who are the fowls? The wicked one. Jesus told us that. Verse 4 They're mocking us and laughing at us. How long, Lord? How long shall it be? How long shall it be? How long will it be for you? Only you can decide. If you like not to get blessed, keep the contrary spirit. If you like being attacked, if you like no rest, no peace, keep the contrary spirit. He'll help you with that. But if you want the things of God, you need to cast out these contrary spirits that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit in all the areas of your life. The Holy Spirit, Isaiah 51, 1 through 7. Hearken unto me. Everyone who wants to walk in righteousness who seek the Lord. Look unto the Lord. He is your rock. Turn to the Lord. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. God is the one who blesses. All good blessings come down from the Father of lights. Verse 45.
But all these curses can come on you if you have a contrary spirit. They will chase you and catch you and overtake you until they destroy you. Right? The destroyer. The destroyer. Yes? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Look at Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. Curses are real, my friend, and so are blessings. But in order to get the blessing, you've got to remove the curse. And in order to remove the curse, you've got to remove the contrary spirit. Because a backslider cannot be blessed. Jeremiah 5, 5. God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. God wants to deliver you. How about you? Jeremiah 5, 1 through 7. Run back and forth in the streets of the city of God and see what you will see. Look out on the road, see if you can find anybody who is honest anymore. And I won't attack the city. And though they say the Lord, I swear to God, I love Jesus. Though they swear, they swear falsely. Oh Lord, your eyes are on the truth. God has attacked them, but they're not sorry. He has consumed them, right, consumer? But they refuse to receive correction. He has made their faces harder than a rock. They refuse to return from backsliding. Verse 6, therefore, a lion will attack them and kill them, right, lion? Spirit. And at night I will attack them with leopards, right? Leopards against all their backslidings. Spirits. These are spirits that are coming and being sent. The waster. Huh? The waster. Jeremiah 2:19. Your own wickedness will correct you. Your own backslidings will reprove you. It will bring evil things and bitter things if you turn away from God. If the fear of God is not in your life, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Look at verse 22. And even if you use a lot of soap and you try and use cleaning solution on yourself, still your iniquity is marked on your spirit. You can't remove that. Jesus said, under the church leaders, on the outside, they're beautiful. But inside... They're like dead men's bones. Inside, they are like walking on graves. In the first, in the first six months of my ministry, 32 years ago, I started going around looking in some churches, and I looked in there and I thought, oh my God. I'll never be part of this. I'll never be involved in all of this. Everyone's saying God has the power, but there is no power. The Bible says they maintain an appearances and mannerisms of godliness, but deny the power of God from such turn away. And I saw all the control and all the manipulation in the churches 
says in the book of Ezekiel, the pastors pushed the people with their horns. And with fierceness and cruelty, they ruled the people. And this is the religious spirit, the contrary spirit in the church. And I said to the Lord, oh my God, I can never be part of that. I could never be part of that. I never grew up in any happy, clappy church. The Lord forbid, forbade me to even go. I never got church poison in my mind like most Christian people. I never got that church poison. Christian can have this, Christian can have that, deliverance is false. I never listened to any of that bunch of nonsense. The churches I went to, there was anointing. There was real Holy Spirit gifts. Demons came out. People got healed. People got touched by the Lord. That was normal for me. Completely normal for me. In the 32 years that I've been doing meetings and I've gone through 81 different countries, some of these tours like me and Manfred did, we'd go out and do 91 meetings in a row. Right? 91 meetings in a row. And I never went to a meeting in 32 years where I didn't see the Holy Spirit move. Not one. Not one. And I told the Lord in the beginning, the day that the Holy Spirit doesn't move in one of my meetings, I'm finished. I'll retire. Because I don't want to be involved in a social program. I don't want to be involved in something where the real power of God is not there, where God himself is not there with his hand upon the situation. It's not that we have to see signs and wonders and miracles every minute because we come to preach the gospel, to preach the word, but this brings signs, wonders, and miracles. It's confirmation. The Lord said to me 32 years ago, yeah, he said, look at my pastors. On Sunday, this is what the Lord said. He said, on Sunday, they are like beautiful little canary birds in cages that sing the most beautiful songs. But if you bump their cage, they will growl like a wolf. That's what the Lord said to me. That's what he said to me. And this is mostly the way it is. Not that we're perfect, but if you don't have the gospel as the foundation, you, have, you don't have a church. And the gospel is not salvation. Salvation is not the gospel. Salvation is only step number one of the gospel. Then you still have preach deliverance and set free the captives, heal and deliver the bruised and the broken, and pray for the sick, lay hands on the sick, that they'll recover. See, that's the gospel. But most of the church today, they can't get past salvation. They, they can't move past. They're frozen in place preaching little baby Jesus for the rest of their life. Little baby Jesus in the manger. The enemy can put chains and fetters and yokes on you. You know what a yoke is? Huh? God told Ezekiel, wasn't it Ezekiel? Put on the yoke and go into church. And he walked in with a, like you put on the carabao. Like this, to show the church how Satan had them bound, how Satan was controlling them like a carabao. Bound. And the church wanted to kill him for that. Isaiah 49, 2 through 9. Uh, 
The Lord has called me from the time I was born. The Lord anointed me and called me from the bowels of my mother. The Lord knew my name before I was born because the Lord created <coughs> me. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hides me. He polishes me and hides me. And he said unto me, you are my servant, and I will use you to glorify my name. I will use you. I will use you. Oh, there's so much anointing. There's so much anointing here right now, my friend. There's so much anointing right now. I will use you like a sharp, threshing instrument. I will open up the war chest of indignation. You will be my battle axe, the sword, my shield in the hand of God. God wants to use you. He wants to use you. Oh, Father, show him. Show him, Lord God, I pray in the name of the touch. Oh, touch, Daddy. Oh, so much anointing. Touch. 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 Come on. Come on. He's high and lifted up. He's high and lifted up. He's high and lifted up. Oh, Lord, let your glory come down. Touch. 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 Oh, Father, I give you praise. I give you praise for a fresh touch by the Holy Ghost. Fresh touch by the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Give us fresh oil, Daddy. Pour out the fresh oil. Pour out the fresh oil. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, Lord. A fresh touch. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let your glory come down. Oh, let your glory come down. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, oh, I give you praise. Oh, I give you praise. I give you the praise. I give you praise. Oh, Lord. I give you praise. Oh, worthy of praise. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. You are worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise. Open up your heart to the Lord. Open up your heart to the Lord. Oh, I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. We are your servants. If no one else will go, oh, Lord, God, send me. If no one else will go, send them all to me. I am your servant. We want to serve God. We want to serve the Lord. 
I don't want to be a bystander. I don't want to be a bystander. Use me in the fire. Use me in the fight. No good soldier entangles himself in the things of the world. It's contrary. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Isaiah 49, verse 6 says, Is it a small thing that I have called you to be my servant? I will give you as a light to the unsaved people, and I will send you out to the ends of the world. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One, who the world hates, Verse 9, I send you forth unto the prisoners who sit in prison houses to say, come forth, come forth, come forth to the marvelous light, come out of the darkness, come forth, all who hunger and thirst, come forth. Come forth and be thou loosed. Come forth to the marvelous light. Come forth. Come out of the darkness, Lazarus, and be thou loosed. Be loosed. Job 36. Come on, take a deep breath. I just heard the Lord say, hinder not my Holy Spirit. Lord, remove the hinderer. Remove the hindrance, Father. We don't want to hinder anything that God's doing. Remove the hindrance. Hindrance, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Every hindering spirit, I bind you. Go! 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Go! 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 Every hindering spirit, go, go, go. Every hindrance, leave now. The name of Jesus. Job 36, 8 through 15. Job 36, 8 through 15. To those who are bound in feathers, bound in fetters, write that. Those who are bound in fetters and tied up by cords of affliction. Then God will show them their works. God will show them their transgressions and the things that they have gone too far against God with. Then God will open up their ears to discipline. 
God will command them that they stop backsliding and sinning if they will obey God and serve God, obey and serve, if they will turn from their sin and obey and serve, they will spend their days in prosperity. They will spend their days in the blessing and their years happy. But if they will not obey God, they will perish. They will die in their stupidity because the hypocrites in their heart heap up wrath from God. They don't even cry out for help when they are bound. Look, they don't even cry out for help when they are bound. They die when they are young. They live amongst the backsliders. But God will deliver the poor in their affliction. And he will open up your ears in times of oppression. He will show you the way out. Write the oppressor. Write die early curse. Bound in chains. Isaiah 10, 24 through 27. Isaiah 10, 24 through 27. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts to, to the people of God, don't be afraid of the enemy. The enemy will come to attack you. He will lift up his staff against you like they did in Egypt. And for a little while, God will call off the attack. In a little while, you can get free from the destruction. We bring these things on ourselves. And it comes for a while. But if you'll turn to God, God will deliver you. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge against the enemy. It shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the enemy will taken off your shoulder. The yoke will be taken off your neck. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing removes the yoke of the destroyer. Off you go. In Jesus' name. Off it goes. Cast off the yoke of Satan and take upon the burden of Jesus, which is light and easy. Be loose. By the anointing. By the anointing. Can you take a couple more scriptures? Huh? Are you sure? It's almost lunchtime. Aren't you getting hungry? Don't you want a donut? What'd you rather have right now, another scripture or a donut? <laughs> Isaiah fifty-one forty-four. I mean Jeremiah fifty-one forty-four. The swallower. I will punish Bel and Babylon. I will punish the demons that came to swallow your blessings 
and I will take it out of their mouth and give it back to you. I will take forth, I will punish the demon bell, I will bring forth out of his, his mouth that which he has swallowed. <coughs> the swallower. The swallower that comes to swallow your blessing, swallow your health, swallow your happiness, all part of the army that is sent against you by the contrary spirit. Jonah, one seventeen. God sent a swallower. He prepared a swallower because he was rebellious, because God called him. God anointed him to change an entire city, and he ran away. How about you? Do you know what you've been called to? You've been called to be a world changer. Can you believe that? Can you accept that? Can you accept that? And truly believe that? All things are possible to those who believe. He was anointed. He heard the voice of God. God said, I want to use you. He said, I don't want to be used. He had a contrary spirit. God sent a swallower to swallow him up and take him down to a hell experience. He says, I was swallowed. I went down, 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 down to the bottom of the ocean, saw the roots of the mountain, saw the bars of hell. And he couldn't get out of the hell experience until he called out to God and said, I'll go back to my calling and now I will be obedient. Obedience to God can call off the attacks and the hell experiences that are going on in your life. Serving God, not believing in God. Believing in God is good, but if you believe in God, you will serve God because God says, serve me because you're a servant. You cannot believe in God if you're not a servant. That's not possible. That's not, that's not possible. And God set him out. Yes? Isaiah 9, 9 through 10. Isaiah 9, 9 through 10. And all the people shall know Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, and they will say in the pride and the stoutness of our heart, even if everything falls down, well, we'll just rebuild it. but they will rebuild it in false things. Though the bricks are fallen down, we will build it with broken stones. Even if the good trees, if the good trees are chopped down, we'll just build with cheap trees. And this is the difference between Happy Clappy and the real church today. They build a false kingdom. They build it with false things. God says they build walls with sand that has no cement, untempered mortar. And when the storm comes, the wall falls down. The walls fall down.
Jeremiah 15, verse 3. We're almost there now. <clears throat> Jeremiah 15, verse 3. If you have a contrary spirit and you don't want to get free, you want to live your life with a contrary spirit, Jeremiah 15, verse 3. I will appoint over you four kinds of attackers, says the Lord. Enemies to attack you. Dogs, right, dogs. Dogs to tear you up, spiritual dogs. It says in Revelations 22, outside of the gate of heaven are the dogs. Humans with dog spirits. Dogs that like to run around and wander. Leave the gate open and they running around, digging in the trash cans. Dogs to tear, fowls of the air to attack, demons, beasts, beasts of the earth, right? Fowls of heaven, right? Beasts of earth, to devour and destroy. To devour and destroy. Why? Verse 6. You have, for, you have forsaken me, says God. You are a backslider who has gone backwards. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you to destroy you. I'm fed up with hearing, I'm sorry. Look what God says. I'm tired of hearing you go, I'm sorry. God don't want to keep hearing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The religious spirit says, well, you can sin as much as you want as long as you go in Jesus' name, I ask forgiveness, and everything will be fine. No, it won't. No, it won't. Because someone with a contrary spirit will say they're sorry, and keep doing it over and over and over and never seek deliverance to stop. They play God like a stupid fool. They think God is a Catholic, is a Catholic priest in a confession booth. Well, that's okay, my, my child. Just beat yourself with some branches and do some penance and say a hundred Hail Marys and light some candles. No. After you say, I'm sorry to God, I don't know how many times, I don't know what the number is, but I would say if you're doing something serious, doing some occult thing or pornography or getting drunk or adultery or, you know, you're doing something serious that God really hates, well, you might be able to say you're sorry. I'm going to guess. I don't have a scripture, but... I'm going to guess maybe two or three times where God says, well, okay, we'll see, but if you do it again, if you do it again, I'm going to make you sorry. Because there's penalties. That's called rebellion. That's called stubbornness. See? And God ain't no stupid fool. You don't play with fire. You don't play with this guy. You're better off to go play with a poisonous cobra snake and put your hand in the box than to try and put your hand against God. And there's going to be a penalty. And the penalty is called a demon. It's called a curse, and a curse has a demon. And you will be punished. It will come. And it's much harder to get a demon out than to get him in. And you want to push God too far. And that's what he's saying. Look, I am worn out with you repenting and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Why would God be fed up with that? Because God intentionally put deliverance in the gospel. He intentionally put repentance and deliverance in the gospel. If you believe the lie of Satan that you're too weak to stop, you have a contrary spirit. That ain't true. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. So if you go, well, I'm so weak, those are the words of the demons that's inside of you or on you or around you. Those are the words of demons. That's not the word of God. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. God will make a way that seems to be no way. God will make a way of escape. You can always change. Legion had 6,000 demons. He still ran to Jesus for deliverance. Right? But if you don't want to get delivered, if you want to laugh and mock that, you're going to get it. Rebellion is witchcraft. Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry, 1 Samuel 15, 23. You, we, you will receive the penalty. And once you get a demon in, you can't, what do you, how are you going to get him out? Be a nice person? Even if you repent, you get the demon come in your life and later you go, okay, 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 I repent, I repent, I'm sorry, I mean it this time, I'm going to stop. And you stop, you still have the demon. Because only deliverance casts out demons. Only deliverance casts out demons. See? Now you're going to have to get delivered. And that's just the way that it is. Four kinds to devour. Look at verse 7. I will fan you. I will take your children. I'll, I'll destroy your children. What? I will destroy my people. What does God say? I will destroy my people. God says, I will destroy my people. My rebellious people. I'll put curses on your kids. Daddy. Mommy. You want to be rebellious? Well, you'll curse your kids. You'll put those curses on your kids. God's a, God will visit the sins of the fathers, mothers too, on the third and fourth generations. You can curse your own children. What do you say right there? I will fan you. You got fan you up there? I will destroy my people since they will not return from their wrong ways. Since they will not. Did you hear that? Since they will not return. Now, if they will return, he won't. Who makes the decision? Do you see? Who makes the decision whether you're going to turn from your evil way, from your wrong way? Who makes that decision? You or the contrary spirit ruling you? It's the same. It all becomes the same. And Jeremiah said, well, what about me? I never sat with those people. Verse 17, I didn't sit with them mockers. I sat alone and I looked until I was full of indignation. Jeremiah says, why can't I get free? He's a servant of God. Why can't I get free? Why can't I be healed? Have you been lying to me, God? He asked God, have you been lying to me? This is what the Lord says. Now, I want you to listen to this. Look at the scripture. 19 through 21. We're going to end with 19 through 21. Are you looking? Tanawabala? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you will return, then I will bring you back to me again. 
if you will stand before me, if you will remove the wrong things out of your life, take the vile from the precious, then I will use you. What's that? That's 2 Timothy 2.20. In a great house, there's vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor. If you'll cast out the vessels of dishonor, you'll become ready for the master's use. Look what he says. If you will take out the vile, bad things, I will use you, and you will speak for me. He says to Jeremiah, if you'll get free, then you wait for them to come to you. You don't go to them. You wait for the backsliders to come to you instead of you going to them. Because when you go to them, they don't listen. But they listen when God starts to break them. God will lift up the humble, but he'll push down the proud, stubborn ones. And I will make you like a fenced, protected wall the backsliders will come to fight against you and to mock you and to slander you, but they will not prevail because I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. Yes, I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked ones. I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. If, if you'll remove the wrong things out of your life. All right, come up here with your good marker. Come up here with your good marker. Look. Come on. I told you to think about it. Who has a testimony? Now, I ain't got time to call you, have you come up here and tell me your life story. You just say what God healed you or delivered you of, somebody. We don't even going to write your name. What? Back problems. Sleeping. Trouble. Ear infection healed. Sinus attacks. Sinus attacks. Allergies. What? Back pain gone. What? Teeth and gums and teeth problems. As asthma. Girl, we got to write a little smaller. We got to get at a new board. Smoking and porn. Hallelujah. Hey. Bowel problems. Smoking and what? Smoking and, and walking a bad path. Oh, and a wrong history. <laughs> history erased. The book of Colossians says, God will erase the handwriting and ordinances of your life. What? Stomach ache. Come on. Depression. L 
lost fire, came back. What? Money curse. Rejection. Who said that? Oh, we love you. Look. Now we, everybody wants to hug her. <laughs> what? Laziness. Slothful, right? Slothful. Headaches. What? What? Poverty, money curse. Facebook addiction. <laughs> Everybody should should have that testimony. <laughs> Family problems. No, I think you got something better than that. Huh? Come on, stand up. Look. Normally I don't dance with men, but. But with this guy, I dance. <laughs> you know why? Come on. Look. Look. Huh? Because he was in an accident and his got, had his leg chopped off. See? And Satan said, your life is over. You see? And God said, no, it's not. And God gave him this new leg, you see? And now look. He's dancing for God. Before, when he came in here, he was in a wheelchair. Now he walks to church, and he's back at his job. Back at his job, do you see? Yes? And we, we, gave, we give thanks so much to the people that are watching that you gave donation to help with that. Really, you made a big blessing. We did not forget about you, and we bless you, yes? You made, you changed a, an entire family, his entire family. Who else? What else? Social media. What? 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 Oh, alcohol drinking, and you got delivered of your uh, Mary uh, necklace too, didn't you, last week? When we were smashing idols, at the end, you guys weren't even here, but he ran up, he gave me his little Mother Mary necklace, <laughs> and we destroyed it, you see? Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Who else? Hatred. Unforgiveness. Loneliness. Arguing. Sadness. What? What? Fear of the future. Worry, worry. <laughs> and you? Huh? Wrong lifestyle? You free? Wrong lifestyle. Huh? Cat fighting? Oh, chicken. Oh. <laughs> Gambling. Gambling. What else? What? Allergy again. Okay, we got it, but that's a different testimony. Put them on there. Another headaches. Gastrointestinal. What's that, heartburn or? 
gastrointestinal trouble. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Nobody has a testimony of I started reading the Bible and I didn't used to? Yeah. Okay. Reading the Bible, contrary spirit. Yes? All right. Now look, we got this much room for next week. And we can get the guys to add another layer. I prophesy it. I prophesy we're going to fill the entire board. Look at all this. Look what the Lord has done. Do you see? And Satan said, oh, nothing going on around here. Just a bunch of noise. Insomnia. Say, Holy Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask forgiveness for every sin in my family, all the contrary spirits that could have brought contrary spirit attackers, hurts, crushed, Robbers, hung, hungry spirits, devourers, swallowers, waster to destroy, lazy, the great waster, waster of your, waster to dis, destroy, destruct you, roaring like a bear. Blindness, madness, groping, heart trouble, destroyer, consumer, spirit lions, lepers, bound in fetters, bound in cords of affliction, oppressors, early death curse, the swallower, Dogs, fowls of heaven, beasts of the earth, fanners. Now we're going to use the weapon. Are you ready for the weapon? Back problems. Money curse. I overcome you by the testimony. I overcome you by the testimony and the blood of Jesus. Sleeping trouble. Sleeping trouble. Come out. Social media addiction. Go. Ear infections. Ear trouble. Family problems. Family trouble, come out. Sinus attacker. Sinus attacks. Sinus attacks. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Sinus trouble. Sinus trouble, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Trouble in the legs. Trouble in your legs. Trouble in the legs. Trouble in the feet. Allergies. Allergies. Come out. Come out. I overcome you by the testimony. Come out. Come out. Back pain. Back pain. Come out. Everything hiding in the back. Everything in the spine. 
Everything in the neck. Everything in the shoulders. Go. Come out, back pain. Come out, back pain. Back pain maker. I bind you. I command you loose. Come out now. Everything working in the spine. Come out. Come out. Alcohol spirit. Alcohol spirits in the family. Come out. Alcohol spirit in the family. Come out. Come out. Comes out. Gums and teeth trouble. Gums and teeth and tongue and mouth. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. Mother Mary. Go. Come out. Come out. Every Catholic spirit. Go. Go. Every spirit of false religion. Come out. Come out. Asthma. Asthma and breathing trouble. Asthma and breathing trouble. Come out. Come out. Come out. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Not reading your Bible. Go. Everything's stopping you from reading the Bible. Go. Come out. Pornography. Come out. Come out. Lust. Spirit of lust. Spirit of perversion. Come out. Come out. Looking at wrong things. Go. Come out. Loneliness. Loneliness. Sleeping trouble. Come out. Come out. Insomnia. Come out. Come out. Trouble in the bowels. Bowel trouble. Come out. Come out. Trouble in the bowels. Trouble, trouble in the digestive system. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Arguing and fighting. Arguing and fighting. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. All bad history. Bad history. All guilt. All shame. All condemnation. Go. Come out. Come out. Come on. Take a deep breath. Depression and worry. Depression, fear, and worry. Depression, fear, and worry. Go. Come out, fear. Go. Doubt, unbelief. Go. Go. Pressure and stress. Pressure and stress. Go. Come out. Stomach trouble. All stomach trouble. Too much acid. Come out. Come out. Stomach problem. Stomach problem. Go. 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 Backslider curse. Loss of fire. Go. Go. Everything trying to steal your excitement for God. Go. 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 Rejection. Rejection. Come out. Come out. Rejection by your mother. Rejection by your father. Rejection by your family. Rejection by your friends. Go. Gambling. Gambling. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Laziness. Lazy. Come out, lazy. Come out, sleepy. Sleepy, lazy. Can't get out of bed. Come out. Come out. Headaches. Headache maker. Go. Go. Headache maker. Go. Go. Come out. Come on. Do two coughs. Go. Go. Go to the glory of God. 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 Come on, call upon the Lord.
Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. In the time of your trouble,
the men. 